Intel finally has something worth talking about in 2024. This is the all new Battle Mage based ASRock Arc B580 Steel Legend OC. This is the first time Intel has been properly competitive in the GPU space. Let's see what the performance is like. To give you guys a bit of a backstory with this card, this card arrived about 24 hours ago, and I wanted to include a whole bunch more testing, including some Linux stuff, but to be honest, there just wasn't enough time. Intel and their local PR team still like to pretend that we don't exist anymore because they think it's okay to kill people's livelihood. But Azeroth came in clutch and they got us this card just in time. So shout out to Azeroth for being legends, still legends. The Azeroth Arc B580 Still Legend OC is a little bit different to the limited edition card, as in it's clocked at around 2800 megahertz. Most of the other stuff under the hood with the Azeroth Arc B580 Still Legend OC is the same as the Intel limited edition card though, and it's completely covered in RGB. It can be switched off with a tiny little switch on the card's PCB. This is a triple fan card, and as far as its operation, during all of the testing, this card was dead silent. To test the ASRock Arc B580 Steel Legend OC, I built up a brand new test bench with the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D as it is the fastest gaming CPU on the market right now. I also retested three other cards for a little bit of comparison. The MSI GeForce RTX 4060 Ventus 2X OC, the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7600 XT Gaming OC, and the Intel Arc A770 Limited Edition. As for pricing, I'd probably guess that the Azeroth Arc B580 Steel Legend OC will be pretty close to the pricing of a first party Intel card at around about 249 US dollars. And as far as Australian pricing, we're seeing anywhere from 400 to around 450 Aussie dollars. To be honest though, I don't think the price difference is gonna matter too much between the limited edition and this Azeroth card because, spoiler alert, the performance for this card is, to put it quite simply, excellent. I can't believe those words are leaving my mouth right now and I can't believe I'm saying this about an Intel product. But enough chit chat, let's get to the testing. Let's start off with 1080p. First up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the high preset. From the jump, the Arc B580 is the fastest card from the lineup, being on average around about 6% faster than the 7600 XT and around 7% faster than the RTX 4060 and about 39% faster than the previous gen A770. On to Unigen Superposition at 1080p Extreme, this benchmark is super GPU bound. Both Intel cards perform well in this benchmark with the B580 being around 3% faster than the A770 and being much faster than both the RTX 4060 and the 7600 XT. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered with the high preset. The B580 is the fastest of the field again being about 9% faster than the RTX 4060 and around 16% faster than the 7600 XT. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 with the high preset, each card here is using its own respective upscaling technology and they're all set to balance mode. The B580 and the RTX 4060 are within spitting distance of each other with the B580 being only about 1% faster on average. Finally, onto Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Yes, I've got dark matter camos on every single gun. We are going to see some different behavior here though. The B580 is about 17% slower than the 7600 XT, but at the same time, the performance is about the same as the 4060. There's a pretty simple explanation for all of this though. COD is highly optimized for consoles and both consoles run AMD GPUs. Jumping over to 1440p, this is the resolution where Intel is really marketing the B580. So how does it stack up? First up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the high preset. The B580 is the fastest of the pack here being around 16% faster than the 7600 XT and about 19% faster than the RTX 4060. And finally, a staggering 31% faster than the A770. On to Unigen Superposition at 1440p custom. Both Intel cards come out on top here, which is surprising considering this is a DX11 benchmark. 
That said, the B580 is around about 11% faster than the RTX 4060 and about 17% faster than the 7600 XT. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered with the high preset at 1440p. The B580 is the fastest of the field again, being about 14% faster than the RTX 4060 and around about 20% faster than the 7600 XT. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 with the high preset, the B580 and the RTX 4060 are once again within spitting distance from each other, with the B580 only being around 2% faster on average and around about 22% faster than the A770 and the 7600 XT. Finally, on to Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 1440p, we see what we saw with the 1080p benchmarks, with the 7600 XT being the fastest again, with the B580 being around about 10% slower on average. All right, this might be a little bit strange for all of these cards, but hear me out. Let's take a look at 4K results. This might surprise you. First up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K with the high preset. The B580 is the fastest of the pack here, being around 28% faster than the A770 and around about 33% faster than the RTX 4060. But this is mainly to do with VRAM limitations. On to Unigen Superposition at 4K Optimize. Both Intel cards come out on top here again. That said, the B580 is around about 25% faster than the RTX 4060 and about 14% faster than the A770. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered at 4K with the high preset. The B580 is 3% slower than the RTX 4060 on average. This one surprised me because of the VRAM and it being a lot less VRAM with the 4060. But to be honest, those are the numbers. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K with the high preset, the B580 storms ahead of the pack being around 15% faster than the A770, about 38% faster than the 7600 XT, and a whopping 51% faster than the RTX 4060. Finally, onto Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 4K with the Ultra preset, the 7600 XT is the fastest again, but only because of the 1% lows and they're about 5% higher than the B580. But here's the most interesting result of all of these tests. At 1080p on average, the B580 is the fastest of the pack, being about 5% faster than the 7600 XT, 7% 7 faster than the RTX 4060, and a staggering 38% faster than the A770. At 1440p, the B580 is 11% faster than the RTX 4060, around about 12% faster than the 7600 XT, and 22% faster than the A770. Finally, at 4K with the ARC B580, it's about 20% faster than the 7600 XT, and for both the RTX 4060 and the A770, it's about 24% faster on average. These are some properly compelling results. Here's the kicker though. It feels good to finally say something positive about Intel, given how poor their new CPUs perform. It's almost crazy to say this, but Intel have just saved the mid-range gaming market with a GPU. That's right, a GPU. It's nice to say something positive about any tech in general, because especially when it involves some Intel products, the ASRock ARC B580 Steel Legend OC is, to put it very simply, a mid-range budget beast. At this price point, given what games you'd actually want to play with something like this, it would seem insane to consider anything else at this point in time. There's just nothing else worth looking at. This thing is it's impressive for what it is. This is a slam dunk for Intel. It's a good work, Intel. It's not often that you listen to what people want, and I'm glad that you did it this time. Let's just hope you can, you know what? I'm gonna let you have this win this time, Intel, just this time.